Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And Rama says hello too. <laughs> That's what Rama says. Yes. He does that a lot. So we want to thank our newest patrons before we get started. Uh, Mr. Vandermoot. Yes. Uh, Christina, Kezia, Tanya, Harrison. And uh, thank you, Roy, for... Uh, your increase and again we couldn't do it without you guys thank you guys so much for being part of the family being subscribed to all three channels evolutionary ee -E arts and hearts home the newest channel so i was watching something yesterday um briefly uh i subscribe to a lot of historical stuff and and really odd stuff too that's just me i like odd stuff odd historical stuff trying to decipher the truth. And they were showing a whole bunch of photographs, um, some that didn't get published a lot and weren't out there in the public domain a lot, of the indigenous people that were here in the Americas when the Europeans came and, and really pushed them off their land. What I really truly want to get across almost more than anything is the fact that the system does this to us. It's done this to us through multiple cycles. I don't want to give you guys a hopelessness feeling because it's not hopeless. This, this is the end of a cycle. And so the system is trying to do this one last time in a big, big way. But we're awake. We are understanding what's going on, at least you know you guys do you followers of this channel and we had the indian removal act and many other acts uh that came about that literally forced people that were living on this land for hundreds of years maybe thousands of years off of where they grew up kicked them off their homes and and stuck them bunched up in one little spot and really i want to get this across to to everybody uh, these people were probably here longer than Europeans have been here in, in the U S probably, you know, it probably goes back a long time. I mean, again, we can look to Israel for instance, and, and you had people living in, in Palestine and then in Canaan before that, um, that were there for over a thousand years. If, if the historical timelines are correct, like 1900 years. And then they were booted out of their lands. This is what the system does. The Trail of Tears, again, Cindy and I both have uh, DNA lineage that goes back to this time. As, as Creek and, and Cherokee is, is what our uh, heritage is on one side of both of our families. And yeah, absolutely, this is an atrocity. And we can feel it in our DNA. And, and you can track your DNA lineage too. You can connect to your ancestors. And again, I'll give you one thing that I do is when I uh, do my mantras and meditation, I always call in my spirit guides, known and unknown, named and unnamed, and my ancestors, and ask for their guidance, their wisdom, their knowledge, share the information with me. May I learn from it and understand better. And I think that's a powerful thing any of us could do in such a generic term. Right. It, and it all goes back to you need to ask. You, you need to ask. They're not going to do anything. And that that's kind of a unwritten law when it comes to talking with ancestors, talking with loved ones who have passed. You have to ask. They're not going to in, intrude. In, in your life so keeping that in mind and if you're stuck on something and you need a little help whether it be in a project or something in life they will come through if you ask yeah absolutely and some of my main guides especially for the period in time which led me uh, out of Florida and over to the west into New Mexico and Nevada for a while uh, which really was a great awakening for myself and I got to snatch uh this wonderful lady and 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 chain her to me for the rest of this physical life uh in that trip the the lineage from here is the one that was guiding me a lot they were they were showing me the way and they do on a regular basis and and it was interesting because yesterday i called in 
my Qigong master, which goes to a life that I believe is around two to three hundred A.D. Um, and yet, you know, Cindy said, I feel this particular spirit guide. And I said, oh, it's because I'd mentioned him by name about 15 minutes ago and he was there. She could sense him there when I was uh, out of ear range and she was inside. I was outside under the tree and I called him in and she detected him. And again, as we go deeper into this yuga, you guys will be able to, if you can't feel him now, you will. And many of you can right now feel your guides and and have patience because it will come as long as we stay clear of everything that they want to do that's lowering our frequencies this this is why the skies are painted because they can't have you awakened they can't have you understanding the bigger picture it all crumbles so this is viral news new york city what do you see you you see just an amazing amount of of migrant immigrants coming in an amazing amount. And it's not just New York City. It, it's all over, well, again, the NATO nations. Because? Because they're doing it again. This is what they did to the Native Americans. This is what they did with European colonization. Because, again, there are these secret chiefs that are hidden in the darkness. Everything that we see from humans is really puppetry. As you see, I mean, there's just masses, uh, massive amounts of humanity from all different places. You know, why are people coming from Venezuela and Haiti? Why are they coming from Africa? Why are they coming from oh, Afghanistan and Syria and, and Iraq? And, you know, they're coming from all over the place. And they're coming into NATO countries. NATO countries. As you see over here. Chicago residents blow up over illegals in the neighborhood. They disrespect us, rob us, harass us. We're going to take over. Nobody's going to be able to stop us from what we're going to do. This is turning, as, again, it's the same war <clears throat> that we saw between the indigenous people and the Europeans that came in, the European settlers, settling on somebody else's land. And, and this is, again, part of what we got to understand when people have... and. A, a, a blind loyalty to their country without understanding how their country came to be in the first place. This is part of the awakening. It could be a little uncomfortable to understand uh, that maybe things weren't so clear. White hat, black hat. Maybe things were not so uh, nice and rosy. Give me all your suffering humanity. Come here and live a life of peace and prosperity and opportunity. This is what these guys are being told right now. This is what is written on Ellis Island, too, you know, because, again, they make like they're doing wonderful things for humanity. But really, all they're doing is rising up one group of people to utilize against another. Then at some time, they'll raise up a new group to wipe out that old group and subject that group to the atrocities that the last one got. Mm -hmm. And the cycle goes on as long as we allow it to occur there in in any situation there has to be some level of agreement that yes this is happening and this is happening and we all agree to it so you know the one that really bothers me the most is that um the financial system that they're going to be putting in place we all have to agree at some level if it's going to thrive and we have an opportunity now to start putting things in place with neighbors and friends where we're not going to be part of that um, or not we're we're not going to agree to be part of that system because it's only going to benefit them and keep in mind you know these indigenous beings they really had the understanding that they were <clears throat> going to live on that la land and thrive and have children and grandchildren until somebody came along and booted them just booted them i mean really they came along with their with their diseases and they came along with their uh they came along with things that might make their life a little easier. So there was an amount of, what's that word when you, when you lure someone into doing something because it sounds yummy, it sounds good, comfortable, great, wonderful. Yeah, they entice, them. entice them. They do. They entice them. And and we're in a situation now where we can definitely identify it because we've looked to see what's happened in the past a little deeper than most. You don't just take the mainstream for it. You look deeper than that. 
and then you start to decipher and you know we we just don't fall for it this time it's kind of it's really up to us yeah absolutely again too you know there's this tendency to to view things in the light that well yeah if you're looking at it just from that tiny little blurb in in genesis 6 talking about giants in those days and you'll have people of an Abrahamic tradition mindset, uh, more fundamentalist mindset. They'll view all giants as children of the, you know, fallen angels, and they're all bad, and that's why they were all wiped out. No, it, that's not so simple. There were some giants that could be very aggressive. And in fact, you know, the Anunnaki are giants. There are giants from other places that came here and settled uh, that were more uh, off on their own, and they wouldn't bother you if you weren't, you know, bothering them. They wouldn't bother you. They would cohabitate. In fact, there's lots of documents talking about friendly giants in, discovered in Patagonia and in the Americas. Friendly. They actually traded, and, and they were civil. So what happened was the system wiped out all the giants purposely because the giants were not as controllable as the homo sapiens sapiens. This is what it always does. There are thousands upon thousands of old newspaper clippings telling of the bodies of giants being discovered throughout North America, for instance. Skeletons of giants in Alaska, ancient cemetery uncovered, right? Uh, the, the, oh man, we could, spend, we could spend days just covering all these. Natchez, Mississippi. Skeletons of Indians estimated to have been more than seven feet tall, unearthed by explorers. Yeah, all over the mound dwellers, the, the ones that, that built those mounds all along the Mississippi coastline up even into Ohio and all Serpent Mound. I mean, the, these were giants. And you could see all the locations where we found uh, giant bodies and, and, and their relics all over the place. There was tons. This was a huge civilization. And again, this is what happens. One culture gets wiped out. Then the next one that wiped them out, like the Native Americans, gets wiped out. You have no recollection. Uh, they, they stop the stories, you know, they give you a new story. They convert everybody to a new religion. And thus everybody is telling the same stories, which are the controller stories. Every Hindu must know lifespan and height in the yugas varies according to the yuga. Again, Satya is the golden age, Dreta is the silver, Dwapara is the bronze, and then Kali is the dark age. Now we're, we're literally, according to Sri Yukatswar's timing, out of the Kali Yuga, and we're going into the ascending Dwapara. As we're going ascending, we're going to be encountering more and more beings that are going to be not as malevolent as the ones that have controlled us from this time period to here. And their influence starts in the silver. They start to sway people. Again, an angel is a being that is non-physical, that doesn't take a physical body, but actually helps people that are in physically uh, embodiment. And, and really, that's, that's the real definition. So, you know, again, an angel helps from the non-physical higher realms. And so the whole, the whole way they've given you that perception in a biblical term of uh, fallen angels is a way that they utilize to have us attack ourselves. Uh, because in a sense, well, you know, we are the fallen angels because we, we were in, in the golden age and then we've gone down through uh, the silver and the bronze down into the darkness of the Kali. We've totally lost who we are and, and the fact that source is w within us. Again, when Yeshua said, and I do think he would say something like, I and the Father are one. Uh, yeah, that's, that's self-realization. That's knowing, oh, yeah, source is within me, and I have a higher self. There, this is just an embodiment for, for learning at this point in time. And the lessons we can learn in the darkest of ages are the greatest of lessons that will reap the most rewards because of the intensity. When we look in the yugas, and we look at the Kali Yuga, humans are relatively short, you know, five, six feet tall, typically. 
live at most about 100, 120 years. It's interesting, too, because in the Bible, you have an angry God saying that that's it. No more living 900 years, Methuselah, 969 years. The most a human's going to live is 120 years. And we see DNA that has been tampered with, chromosomes that have been fused, DNA that's been turned off. Yeah, it's it's genetic manipulation. That's and that that God is not the creator of this universe. That's the that's the conquerors. That's the what ones in in Hinduism we would call them asuras. So in the Bronze Age, humans are bigger. They might be eight to ten feet tall, maybe even a little higher. They they might live at, at the farther reaches up to a thousand years. Now that's your legends of of the biblical patriarchs like Methuselah and, and all the rest. In the Silver Age, they might live to be 10,000 years old. That feels incomprehensible, but it is a different type of body again. And one of the big questions in Tartaria is why is there so few bathrooms in gigantic castles and gigantic buildings? It's because people didn't eat like we do now. Totally different set. They want you eating heavy foods. They want you, uh, you know, again... Now they want you to go from eating, you know, meat and their GMO foods to eating stuff that's completely synthetic with absolutely no life force because it's the life force that's super important. And so in the Silver Age, then 10,000 and you might see people 10, 12, 16 feet tall and then even bigger in the Golden Age. In the Golden Age, you know, you might see 20, 30 foot tall giants that are occupied by the same spirits that are occupying normal size uh, human bodies in this age. And they might live to be a 100,000 years old because everything is different and we are having more of a 5D experience, although it is embodied. Now, here you see from July 20th, all passengers, including kids, must swipe their ID cards in order to take train, plane, cruise. Yeah, you know, that, that that system that we find in a dine, fine dining ware country is, it's already being integrated in quietly. Not a conspiracy anymore. London train station launches the world's first facial recognition security gates, the first ever biometric corridor for train travel open today in London's Zero Star Terminal. The system replaces border checks with facial verification checkpoints so you just walk past. And then in China, too, they, they will have big billboards that depict people's faces that have very low social credit scores. The same thing will be coming here. So if you sneak out into public and something catches you, all of a sudden you're, you might find your face blaring on a billboard, you know, over Times Square and, and your number blaring out in, in embarrassment and calling attention to you. Ah, the system is so loving, isn't Big Brother nice? Meanwhile, everybody is preparing for war because this war is how things are going to shift. This is what gets it done because they're going to need to rebuild after the war. It will probably be not too long because they have their timelines in place. 2025 is a key year and there's not much time between now and 2025. There's a lot that happens between now and, and 2025. War games are nonstop, Taiwan, Taiwan war games. They're war gaming the Chinese invasion. Uh, China and Russia are holding the largest joint military exercises. Of course, North Korea's been firing b ballistic missiles all the time. But it is gonna trigger in a bigger way very soon. Now, the system is feeling a backlash. You know, Bud Light is, is at a dollar sale, right? Heineken, Gil Bates owned Heineken. Their shares dropped the most since pandemic. Beerflation curbs demand. Yeah, and, and Heineken is a standout in that. The second largest brewer in, in, in the world. Uh, they're, they're not doing well. Well, that's good because, you know, again, who wants to help Gil Bates? Russian scientists succeed in growing watermelon in Antarctica. If we could grow watermelon in Antarctica, not just watermelon in reality, peppers and tomatoes too. 
and, and other things. If we could grow in Antarctica, we don't need to have any food problems. But if we didn't have food issues, if you know, food sc scarcity is a tool. Just like free energy would just, oh my gosh, that would cause havoc. Because how could you control people with free energy and plenty of food? You know, and that's what makes you and I so popular <laughs> for so many beings that, that live off of the system where people are able to control each other, you know, and that's why if Mike and I say just the wrong thing, we we do not get away with, with anything. And thank goodness for Patreon is so far has proved we've been able to speak a little bit. I'm not sure why. I think I think there's some type of karmic thing tied to that. I don't know. I don't know. But we can speak on Patreon. We're grateful for that because sometimes it's therapeutic when you just are able to get get that information out there to people because you know it to be true. You've seen it to be true. And it's so hard to just sit here and bite our tongues all the time. Um, so yeah, there is definitely something uh, good about us being able to speak a little more mm, open. But these controllers, they want to stop us at every turn. And really, you know, food and what we take into our bodies, like voluntarily that's one of the bigger tools that they use and now they're even going to control that aspect of it and we can't find ourselves in that position we have choices that we can make now we have options uh that we can that we can work with now and and i don't think that's always going to be the case i think there's going to be a point where it's just going to be you're just too far down the wrong one so yep so here we have the world's oldest man dies at 127 drinking out of a plastic bottle and as you read the article, it says that he, he gave some of his longevity uh, to the fact that he, he drank alcohol regularly. So, uh, again, are they trying to sew something? And when I think of this, I think of a pilgrim hat. I can't, I can't help it. It feels like a pilgrim hat. So I think there's a lot of subliminals there. You know, we've talked about Li Ching Yun before. And he was documented to be 256 years old. Uh, he, as you see, he's holding ginseng. What did he eat? Wild herbs. He, he didn't eat steaks. He didn't eat chickens. He, 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 he didn't eat a lot of heavy foods. And this is hard for us to, to really get through our head because we've been sold on balanced nutrition and all. But it's really about the chi. It's about the life force. And if we want to accelerate, really accelerate our, our longevity, and also our immune system, that takes precedence. It really, really does. So this article talks about him. And again, you know, we've talked about him before. He was anywhere from official um, documentation, uh, anywhere from 197 to 256. Now, Cindy's been able to contact him, and he actually said he was 300 or 300 plus. He was older, and one of the main foods, like I, I keep seeing and hearing, uh, roots, roots. Yeah. That's so important. Roots. This guy lived off roots, but the thing is, is he lived and he got to have that experience here in this 3D world for a very long time. So things don't have to be the way they are right now. But look, the water's poisoned, the ground poisoned, the sky is poisoned. I mean, how do we get around that? We we have to learn which plants are actually going to detox our ground. We have to learn which plants do we need around us to help help our help our air quality. There's ways through this mess. Yeah, and wild ginseng, goji, reishi mushrooms, and and I think maybe it hit me when I'm just doing this article. Maybe that's why I, I keep being told to pick up reishi every time I'm. Good stuff you know, have an opportunity. Heisha Wu, uh, which, which we've taken to, it, it, it promotes longevity and energy, go to Kula. And he did take a little bit of rice wine, but he, he himself, now again, he himself, uh, he didn't stress this at all. And that probably was a rare occurrence. He said the water was the most important thing. The water being clean. Oh gosh, yes. The water being clean and pure and coming from a pure place, it has magic to it. When when they talk about the fountain of youth, I mean, that's a real thing. Yeah, and it's not just one fountain of youth. It's finding the cleanest water supply that you can find. So this is Paul Hellier. And again, this, this particular comment there, now they're claiming aliens have provided a message to our leader and the messages we need to de... Oh, there's too many of us. Seriously, well, this is from 2013. 
And this is from his own book. Now, again, he, he used to be a defense minister for Canada, and he's come out talking about um, the fact that they're, they're for real. These ETs are for real. And again, just even letting this run in the background probably demonetized that, which I had it stopped, but then they'll turn it on just to... This is exactly how they operate. This is exactly how they operate, as you see. Now, this person assumes it's the congressional uh, hearing on aliens. And again, so aliens wrote a letter saying our air and water is contaminated seriously. So what happens is I think there's a lot of people that go off uh, the other way. Now they're going to throw the whole concept of aliens out now that the government's admitting that they are there. They're going to think there are no aliens because they're just simply pushing forward their one world order agenda. And that's exactly what they want you to think. You know, they, they want us divided. They, they work through division. So this wasn't from that hearing. This, the, you know, he's been dead for a while now, and you can watch uh, this, uh, which is an interview uh, with him from nine years ago. I'll give you guys all of the links. Um, but the terminology used is exactly the terminology that's in this book from 1990, Raymond F. Uh, Fowler, Raymond E. Fowler, or F. Fowler. Yeah, the. Betty Andreas and uh, UFO abductions, one that I've talked about before, because, and some will say, oh, that's been disproven. E yeah, by Snopes. You know, again, the, the, those are page shills that try to disprove uh, things on purpose because it's, it's all about confusion. But it, what comes across clearly is that connection between the biblical watchers, the greys, and the power structure, because she saw greys, but she also saw very Nordic-looking beings, the same ones again, uh, that were working with uh, H-I-T-L-E-R, and many others, because again, you know, this, this power structure is right here, right here. And we have to recognize it's right here. They control the narrative, the B'nai Elohim, the Watchers, the Origins of Evil. And this is from the Torah. So this is going to take an Abrahamic point of view and view them all as fallen angels, of course, uh, and views, you know, Yodhe Vahe in a positive light. And Yodhe Vahe is, is basically the Gnostic... Uh, it's head archon, so to speak. And in reality, you know, it's, it's a thought form that's been set up by the control system in order to harvest energy. So every time somebody says, Alleluia, you're sending energy to the controllers. And <clears throat> think about that. Think about that. I mean, that is such a big realization. There is a creator of this universe. It's not Yode Vohe. No, that's, that's basically... Um, it's a tool uh, used for energy gathering. And they actually use our own energy against us. This is what they do all the time. Alistair Crawley, secret agent, real adventure of a satanic spy. Yes, the most wicked man alive. And, and Cindy's been able to channel Alistair. And yeah, you know, he unknowingly to him... But again, Alistair delved down dark uh, roads. Absolutely, he delved down dark roads. Anytime we open ourselves up to anything that's mind-altering, whether it's legal or not, we're, we're opening ourselves up to these beings. <clears throat> so stay sober is, is, is the lesson. Stay on guard because, yes, uh, the adversary is like a roaring lion. I was, he, he contacted a being very much like a gray. Again, he talked about these secret chiefs. Who are the secret chiefs? Well, you know, they are the ones that are really in control of humanity. They can sometimes take physical form. They can overshadow. This is exactly what we're talking about with the draconian reptilian power structure. And Aleister Crowley discovered this too, but he was utilized by that power structure as so many had been before him, just like John D. Why, if there were no ETs, do we have the Nazca lines drawn that you can only see from the sky? I, you know, the, the evidence is overwhelming. Ten historic paintings that clearly show UFOs. Again, the Annunciation. This is from 1486. A saucer beaming down. 
the Holy Spirit, a dove, into Mary, and you see angel wings here. I mean, we've gone all over this so many times, 1350, UFOs in the skies, angels, and people operating extraterrestrial vehicles in the sky at the same time. Yes, there are angels. Yes, there are aliens. Yes, there are, the, there's all the above. 1710, the baptism of Christ. I mean, it goes on and on, 1400s. They're everywhere. You know, you're not resting on on just some politicians that are paid for uh, to come out and, and give you an affirmation that aliens are real. No, they've always been here. And, and yes, the alien invasion happened a long time. It was the wars between the Devas and the Asuras. And because we we're heading into a darker time, the darkness won. And the darkness has given us our major religious beliefs. It's given us our political structure, concepts like capitalism, as well as communism and socialism. This is all their construct. The wars between the devas and the asuras. You could look to Hinduism and you'll get clear indications how big it was. In the Mahabharata, we find in one big battle, more than one billion people. 1,660,000,000 men have lost their lives in the war. Yeah, you know, and sometimes we, we look at those numbers now and we say that could never be, so we just try to, to, to make it fit. But the paradigm is the lie. And we heard about the Battle of Dulce from Phil Schneider. I mean, you, you got Stephen Greer and you got all the people that uh, go up on Gaia some of which, you know, are just looking for money, obviously. Some of which are really trying to tell the truth, and then they get seduced by money. And, and others of which are trying to tell the truth, and then they get threatened. And then they, you know, go along with giving you maybe 70, 80, 90% truth and, and 10, 20% distortion. Somehow, you know, they found the time to sneak in Homo compensis as another species of human because we found the skulls. They had elongated skulls. This Again, this is all part of, they were not human. The form of magnum, which is where the skull and the spinal cord come together, are totally different than Homo sapiens sapiens. Their DNA is different. And so people now have picked up on this and saying, obviously, they would have a higher IQ, copper-based blood, RH negative, European base in Switzerland. Well, you know, Switzerland doesn't even count in a lot of stats. It's Switzerland's very, very curious. Yeah, emotionally negative. Yet these, these are the slaves. These are the head slaves. These are, these are the head slaves of the lower uh, astral realm, you could say. And again, they are the ones that gave us the Abrahamic tradition, and it came from Mars. This is the thing. What you saw with Mars is what they would do with the Earth if left unchecked. And this is the conspiracy of Hopo Homo Capensis. Uh, coneheads. Yes, there really were coneheads. Now, some are, are, there's many different species, and we could go into this in another video as we're going too long. But again, I'll give you guys all the PDFs. There are, we can't lump everybody into one, you know, big barrel and throw them all out. Because again, there are benevolent giants. There are giants that are indifferent. Some of the giants were us. And yes, there were some that were very negative and would do all sorts of things like this. You know, this is that famous to serve man. No, don't go on the first ones. No, what? What are you talking about? It's a cookbook. Uh oh, he's got a big ass head, doesn't he? Excuse me, I swore. Uh oh. To serve men. No, no, no. A foreshadowing of what is to come. Indeed. And with all of that, definitely find your grounding point. Get centered. And we appreciate you guys. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.